I'm going to try to win a Super Bowl, but I am only allowed to use players that I trade for. I will start by spinning this wheel to decide the team I'll be using. Then I have to make one trade with every other team in the NFL. And the teams that I trade with will also be randomly decided by spinning the wheel. Once I have finished trading and my team is built, I'll be simulating the season to see if we can in fact hoist up a Lombardi trophy of our own. Now it's time to find out what franchise I'll be taking over and pretty much be rebuilding from scratch as I will be trading the entire team away. And hey, I'm headed to Vegas. I am the new GM of the Raiders. Take a good look at everybody you see on the roster right now because in the these next few minutes, we aren't going to have a single one of these guys. Time to find out who our first trade partner is going to be. I'm so excited and nervous at the same time because I really can't afford to make any mistakes as the GM. And okay, our first deal we are going to be making is with the Steelers. No pun intended, but I think we kind of just stole some really good draft picks from the Steelers. And I think that's going to be my strategy right now. Since we have to make a trade with every single team, there's no reason to commit to trading for any players this early on. So getting a ton of draft picks right now can help us later and make our job so much easier as our second trade partner is going to be them Chicago Bears. We pretty much just turned a third round pick from next year's draft into a third and fourth round pick in this year's draft. Yo, these GMs got to start taking notes. I feel like I can't lose a trade if I'm getting draft picks. Those picks are so much more valuable in these deals. So let's see, who are we going to be dealing with now? And it's going to be the Cheeseheads, the Green Bay Packers. Really not giving up much here, just a third round pick and two super low rated players. And we're getting two draft picks in return. I don't know how long I'm going to stock up on draft picks before trading for players, but it's nice to be able to move some some of our lower overall players and get actual assets for them. And hey, we're trading with one of the busiest teams in the offseason right now, the Jets. This trade is really just Jacoby Myers for a second round pick as we're just unloading some more bad players off the team. Everything's been going to plan so far. I know it's only going to get harder as we run out of teams to trade with. And oh boy, I'm going to be so tempted here. We are trading with the Dolphins. Blockbuster deal. We're sending a first round pick, Josh Jacobs, and a third round pick to Miami for two and one of the best offensive linemen in the league, Teron Armstead. Now, any players I trade for right now doesn't mean that they're locked on the team as I could just trade them again but I feel like the trade with Miami was pretty solid on both sides and now we get to trade with America's team. Kind of taking advantage of the Cowboys losing Dalton Schultz getting a first round pick here is huge. We pretty much just got our pick back that we sent to Miami and I really feel like I'm going to be able to build such a good team if trades keep going our way like this and hey we get to trade with another very busy team this offseason the Texans. We're moving some more low overall players packaged with Colton Miller and we find ourselves with two third round draft picks. I promise you those two third round picks will turn into a superstar player you just gotta let me cook and trust the process and now we're going to be making a call to the 49ers front office and it appears i've made another blockbuster trade we land iuke armstead and Traverius ward three players who play their positions very well i think we most definitely won that trade regardless of if we keep the players or trade them down the line the value was great for us and now we will be dealing with the colts pretty fair trade here didn't give up any super high draft picks and we got a great haul in return we're now on our 10th team to be traded with and so far i'd like to think i haven't overpaid in any of these deals but oh boy i gotta get on the phone with bill bellich check now. I mean, if we can keep making deals like this, I think we're going to be just fine. What a come up for us. Here's a look at the team so far. Still a ton of moves we have to make, including trading Devontae Adams and Max Crosby at some point. Whenever we part ways with Devontae or Mad Max, you best believe I'm going to try to get a crazy haul for us. And oh boy, it's time to make a deal with the Motor City. I really just snagged almost every new acquisition the Lions picked up during the offseason. Even though we gave up a draft pick there, I don't think it's crazy to feel like we actually kind of had the upper hand in that trade. And now we're going from one cat team to another. It's the Jaguars. And we were able to recoup some draft cap on this deal. Low overall players for draft picks. I'll do those deals all day long and now I gotta do a deal with Sean McVay and his LA Rams. This was an absolute fleece regardless of if we keep these guys or not. We made out like bandits. I feel like at the very least, Akers, A-Rob, and Higby could all be role players for the team if we keep them down the stretch and oh boy, we're calling King Henry's home now. It appears I've underestimated how valuable the 22nd pick of the draft actually is. Definitely overpaid here. Well, on the bright side, that was really our first mistake as a GM. I'm not too worried. We have been in cruise control and pretty much every deal so far, but now it's time to talk to the Vikings. Well, since Justin Jefferson is impossible to trade for, I settled for CJ Ham and Ezra Cleveland. We're not going to be able to fleece every team, but in an instance where I can dump off low overall players for depth on our roster, I will. And with that said, it's time to trade with the G-Men. I consider this a fleece though. We got a pretty average right guard, but they also threw in a draft pick. As the wheel of teams gets smaller and smaller, my decisions have to become more meaningful and I need to start thinking about who we really are going to keep. And oh boy, with the first pick of the NFL, NFL draft. The Carolina Panthers are now our trade partner. And we just took Von Bell, who they just signed in free agency right out of their hands for pretty much nothing. I'm really starting to think we may just be really good at negotiating because, wow, we are just making magic happen in these deals. And now we get to ride on into the sunset down to Broncos country. Blockbuster alert. Oh man, we just finessed. We got a first round pick with Cortland Sutton and Ben Powers, who they just signed, but they were so okay with giving him up for Mad Max. Landing a solid O-lineman and making our wide receiver room even deeper while it 
the same time receiving a first round pick is like Christmas morning for a GM as we now will be dealing with the Bucks. By sending one of our first round picks we still have to Tampa Bay, we acquired three players who would start on the team right away. That trade with the Buccaneers might have been a bit of an overpay, but I have to be smart with what teams are left, and again, all of those guys could start on our team right now, but hey, now we gotta deal with the champions of the NFC, the Philadelphia Eagles. Small deal here might have overpaid with a third round pick, but we got Brandon Graham for the D-line. With 11 teams left to trade with, the new look Raiders are looking pretty good. We still have to deal Devontae Adams to a team as well, which could really net us a huge come up, and right now we're gonna be negotiating with the Browns. Very small deal here, but we get more help at the linebacker position. You'll be seeing smaller deals like that where we really just try to add some more depth at certain positions to completely fill out our roster, and next up, our trade partner is the Saints. I tried some player packages with the Saints, but they wouldn't budge, so we settled for a couple of third round picks. It might sound funny, but those third round picks can really push the needle in some of these trade negotiations, so I'll take them, and hey, we're now trading with the Super Bowl champions, the Chiefs. Really just filling out our front seven a bit more, didn't want to give up Tart, but it saves us from giving up one of our third round picks right now. It's easy to replace players with picks, so as tough as it was to give up Tart, we still have Stewart and Armstead at least, and now we gotta bolt up for this next trade with the Chargers. We just dealt the Chargers three fifth round picks for two role players on our defense, we take those. The collection of draft picks was well worth it, and I'm happy I took that approach from the start. It's paying off nicely right now as we focus our attention on trading with the Seahawks. Oh man, I wanna know what you guys think about this trade. We sent a first round pick and two third round picks over to Seattle for Quandre Diggs, Tyler Lockett, and Jordan Brooks. Landing two superstars and a young talent all in one trade makes me smile from ear to ear. I am so happy right now. This team is gonna go crazy, but let's get crazy with Buffalo first and cook up a deal with the Bills. Well, we do need a kicker, so we got Tyler Bass. Guys, I really meant it when I said I have to trade for every player that we're going to be using. That includes our kicker and punter, and now it looks like we're headed to the jungle to trade with the Bengals. And just like that, we got ourselves a punter as well. Now that our special teams are all taken care of, let's get back to putting the finishing touches on this amazing team we've built so far as we are going to be wheeling and dealing with the commanders now. It's finally time to say goodbye to Devontae Adams, but we got three key acquisitions for our defense. The final three trades we make here are most likely going to be small deals for more role players and backups, starting with the Arizona Cardinals. Not the biggest names involved in this trade, but they are without question going to serve a purpose on our team. It comes down to the Dirty Birds and the Ravens, who will be our second to last trade partner, and oh, it's them dirty birds. We're going to Atlanta and trading with the Falcons. This was the best we could do, but hey, it gives us some more depth in the front seven. Well, 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 I wonder who we could possibly be trading with now. Let's see where the wheel stops, and oh, surprise, surprise, the Ravens are going to be our final trade partner. Never would have thought a punter could be the reason we get a deal done, but we just got a nice upgrade at the right guard position and more help at linebacker. Since we're finally done trading with every team in the NFL, I am now releasing all of the Raiders players we were unable to trade away, and to make sure we have a complete 53-man roster, I signed some free agents, but don't worry, they won't be playing at all because they have been reset to a zero overall. And voila, our team is complete, an 88 overall offense led by Tua and Tyler Lockett, and an 87 overall defense that is ready for war featuring guys like Chase Young and Kendall Fuller. It's time to simulate the season to see how well our guys perform. Well, fellas, a 16-1 record is something to brag about. We cooked! We had the number one offense in the NFL with over 7,000 yards. Tua went to work this year with a ridiculous touchdown to interception ratio, and he had almost five. 5,000 yards through the air. David Montgomery had himself a season two with 23 touchdowns and over 1,500 yards. And look at Tyler Lockett leading every receiving stat on the team. What an absolute unit. Devin White led us in tackles. Harold Landry led the team in sacks. And Von Bell was feeling stingy this year with five interceptions. Dog, no way. 201 MVP too. This is an insane sim. And even though Nick Chubb won Offensive Player of the Year in the AFC, Monty was right behind him. And they gave your boy Coach of the Year. Let's go. Now you just gotta subscribe. Sorry, I don't make the rules. Luckily for us, we have a first round bye here in the playoffs, so we get to mentally prepare for our potential opponent. Well, 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 a familiar foe has appeared as we are taking on a division rival here in the divisional round. It's Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. Going up against Mahomes' magic in the playoffs is a test like no other, but Tua and the squad are locked in. Now I'm going to be super simming until there's something we can actually watch. It was a back and forth first quarter until Tua just connected with Ayuk for an 83-yard touchdown. After that Ayuk touchdown, there was no action in the first quarter, but now with under two minutes left to play in the first half, David Montgomery barrels into the end zone for another Raiders touchdown. They say when it rains, it pours, and the Raiders defense stepped up big, forcing a quick three and out, giving two and the Raiders enough time to get down into striking distance, and the Raiders have scored three touchdowns here in the first half against the Chiefs. The entire third quarter was a snooze fest, but our Raiders are now just outside of the red zone and are settling for a field goal to make this a 24-0 ball game. It's safe to say that the Chiefs are in desperate mode. It is 
fourth and 19 from their own 38 yard line. They are keeping the offense out on the field and they are not converting. Let's go. That failed fourth down conversion turned into another field goal for the squad. It appears that Patrick Mahomes may have flipped the switch. Please tell me we don't choke this game somehow. They went for the onside kick, but our boy Tyler Higby recovered it. I'd like to think that no matter what happens on this play, we should pretty much win the game, but we know how much EA loves Mahomes in these Sims. If we pick up a yard, though, we should be headed to the championship round, and that is why we traded for you, CJ Ham. First down, Raiders, and now we are one win away from the Super Bowl. It is all gas, no breaks here in the AFC as we are now facing off against Joe Burrow and the Bengals in the championship round. We know exactly what Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase can do, so we have to be sharp, we have to be on our toes, and I am going to once again be super simming till there's something cool we can watch. And just like that, two minutes into the game, we're at the two-yard line. It's third and goal for our Raiders. Two is turning around and giving it to Monty, who's getting stuffed. Huge decision right here. The offense is staying out on the field on fourth and goal, and that was a mistake. Oh, man. Surprisingly, nothing else happened in the first quarter, but now here we are, 30 seconds into the second quarter. We have it first and goal at the six, and David Montgomery's dolphin diving into the end zone. He's been a beast for our team. The Bengals got the ball down into the red zone, but our defense stood tall by bending and not breaking as we only give up a field goal on this possession. We quickly had a three and out, so we punted the Bengals the ball, who then had a quick three and out, and Tyler Lockett just had a 64-yard punt return touchdown. If you thought there wasn't going to be any more action here in the first half, well, Joe Burrow has something to say about that as Burrow from the 10-yard line connects with Jamar Chase. Oh my gosh. Both teams kind of pumped the brakes here in the third quarter, but our Raiders are back down inside the red zone. Third and six right here from the 17-yard line. Clean pocket from Tua who fires and he finds Tyler Lockett. Tyler Lockett is him at this game. What a catch. After that Lockett score, the Bengals responded with a field goal, but we quickly responded with a 44-yard touchdown strike to Ayuk. You know Joe Burrow isn't going down without a fight. He links with Jamar Chase for their second touchdown connection today. What is going on? A 75-yard rushing touchdown for our guy Monty. Under 30 seconds to play. The Bengals have one time out remaining. It's first and goal from the three-yard line. A touchdown makes this a one-possession game, and they got it. If we recover this onside kick, we are headed to the Super Bowl, and McPherson kicks it right to Allen Robinson. Let's go, Raiders. We're going to the Super Bowl. The stage is set here in the Super Bowl. We are up against the Carolina Panthers. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I believe the Panthers quarterback is indeed the Red Rocket. Andy Dalton took the Panthers to the Super Bowl, and now we're going to be super simming till there's something cool we can watch. Look at our Raiders already down inside the red zone right here. Third and four from the 19, and well, we just ran a draw. I disagree with that play call, but at least we got a field goal. Our defense did their job, and you know our offense has been clicking on all cylinders all season long. It's right here. First and goal from the nine. We set up a screen to Monty, and Monty's looking like beast mode. That's a touchdown. This Raiders team has been so much more efficient than anyone we've gone up against is right here, too, from the one-yard line, finding a wide-open Ayuk, but we kind of had the extra point blocked, and I really hope that doesn't impact us too much. Under a minute left to go in the first half, and here's our first look at Andy Dalton and the Panthers, who have the ball at the six-yard line. It is third and goal, but let's see. Will Andy Dalton prove to the Panthers that they don't need to draft the quarterback with the first overall pick? That wasn't smart, but they at least got a field goal. You know if there's any time on the clock, our Raiders are going to do whatever it takes to try to put up some more points, as we have a 43-yard field goal try for Tyler Bass, and he knocks it through to end the first half. Just over halfway through the third quarter, and Andy Dalton has led the Panthers down inside the 10-yard line. Third and goal from the six. Very clean pocket until Chase Young says something about it, and we block their field goal. Things could get very interesting right here if the Panthers punch this in, and that is LaVisca Chenault into the end zone. Remember when we missed that extra point early on in this game? Well, that could mean a lot if they convert this two-point conversion to Miles Sanders. If we pick up four yards on this play, the game is over, but if we fail to convert, the Panthers have some life to a serving, and he finds his guy, Brandon Ayuk. We did it with a team of traded players only. We are Super Bowl champions. Let's go. I'd love to know who you guys think the team MVP was. Let me know in the comments, and if you want to see more great content, click here.